Now, Hall of Fame Senator from Alabama, the great Tommy Tuberville. Senator Tuberville, welcome. Um, let's, let's start with the border story. Um, President Biden, he, he's, he, I don't know, his spokesmen say this, that, and that. He's not appearing. He's, he's not at the table. He's not doing anything. For the first time, Larry, in three years, we were in a caucus meeting, and finally he sent some of his gophers to meet with no. Republicans and Democrats. Mm. And they're conferring back and forth. They don't want to do anything at the border. If they wanted to do it, Joe Biden would have done it years ago. We've let millions come across. I met with some high-ranking officials a couple of weeks ago uh, from Mexico. Mm. And they said that they have put 38,000 new people online to stop the influx coming up from the south mm -hmm. through Mexico. And they told me, Coach, we can stop about half of them. Next year is going to be records broken every day. We cannot stop them. They're coming. Joe Biden has invited them. And so they're going to come. Our Border Patrol agents are overwhelmed. We better put somebody down there. Or I mean, again, there's no border right now, but they're inviting people to come, and they're going to continue to come as long as that happens. And, but he's not involved. You're exactly right. Well, that's the thing. I mean, <clears throat> I've been in that game, as you are now, uh, a lesson until the president gets involved in an issue like this that ain't going to be solved. Now, I don't believe it'll ever be solved because the Democratic position is open borders. Republican position is catch and deport. But I want to ask you, look, we've had Senator Jim Langford on twice, and, I've, and he's done a great job. He's been a good communicator. And he has said, no text, no nothing. So that's fair enough. I just want to say to you, sir, that I think this has to be what I call a Trump-tough bill. In other words... We need the wall. We need remain in Mexico. We need to reconfigure Title 42 because there's big public health problems that still exist uh, after COVID. And we need, uh, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars for more border agents to police the border. Now, to me, that's a solution. I don't want the GOP to take anything less. No. I no. mean it. I don't want them to take anything less than well, that. Well, the House is not going to take anything less than HR2. Right. You know that. Right. And, and so people need to know this. I mean, I'm. I'm, I'm now a politician from the educational background. But the one thing I understand is if you're not going to go by the laws that's on the books now, mm. what's going to make you go by the laws that we're going to put in front of the president? He could care less. Mm. I mean, he's not going to go. He, he doesn't go by the laws we have on the books now. So we do all this negotiating, uh, negotiation for an, uh, a new supplemental that they want money for all these wars that they've started. Mm. But at the end of the day, if we were to sign something and give them the money, he's not going to go by the, by the rule of law. Uh, his main job as president is to protect the American citizen. And he's failed at it uh, unmercifully. And it's been terrible for the American people. You know, our friend Mark Levin talked about this last night on his TV show. I heard it driving down from Connecticut. Um, on the, on the radio, but um, Mark believes that's an impeachable offense, that there are clear laws on the books to protect the sovereignty of the United States, which Mr. Biden has broken willy-nilly, willy-nilly, and will continue to break, undoubtedly, until the day he's pushed out of office. I mean, that I, I don't want to press the point, but it is an impeachable offense. It is high crime and misdemeanor. Oh, they're getting people killed every day. Mm. Uh, and as you heard Christopher Ray say just a few weeks ago mm. at a hearing, uh, we're in trouble. I mean, we're going to have some bad things happen in this country. And it just goes back to the decisions that the White House has made. They could care less. We're losing 100,000 people a year to drugs. Mm. I mean, a direct, direct correlation to the, to, to the uh, uh, border. And it's just, it makes you sick to your stomach to see what's happened uh, to these young people that sometimes they just take a pill thinking it's something else mm -hmm. and they die from it. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people are just, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. You know just, this president's way out of line. And as Mark Levin said, it should be an impeachable Well, I mean, he's, bra he's, he's breaking the law. I, yeah. I don't want to carry that too far, but it is an important constitutional point which needs to be raised. Just one other thing. And the other side, other parts of this bill, this foreign aid national security funding bill. Look, I... I love him to death, but Lindsey Graham keeps making this argument, and the Democrats make this argument. This is a Joe Biden's argument, it's Chuck Schumer's argument. I hear Lindsey making the argument, and I love Lindsey, but I don't disagree with him, that if we don't give him $60 million, I'm sorry, $60 billion, Ukraine, 
Russia is going to invade Poland and this and that and NATO and we're going to have a world war. Um, first of all, I don't think $60 billion is going to matter because it looks like a stalemate. You may disagree, but that's just my reporting. It looks like this. I don't know what this extra money is going to do exactly. And second of all, the threat that Russia will come down and invade all the NATO countries, I mean, that threat need never materialize if we had a strong, tough president in the first place. Exactly. This never would have happened with President Trump. I was with Zelensky in Kiev three months before this happened. Mm -hmm. We could have stopped it at that time had we given him arms at the border, say, listen, look what we have. Don't come in. Joe Biden said, ah, it's going to be a small incursion. Mm -hmm. You know, I just talked to uh, President Putin. Well, it's been a small incursion. Our half million people have been killed. Mm -hmm. But it, the problem is with, with me, I heard the same thing from a lot of people. They're going to keep going through Europe. He can't take eastern Ukraine. Russia can't. Now, what, what gives everybody the thought that he's going to continue on through Poland, the Baltics, all the way through Europe? You That's a phony argument. Yeah, you can't sell that to me. $60 billion to Ukraine. Does, I mean, Mr. Schumer, who, by the way, I deal in principles and policies, not personalities. I've known Chuck Schumer for a very long time. It's not personal. Just saying, he keeps saying, if you give them $60 billion, they'll win the war. And if we don't give Ukraine $60 billion, they'll lose the war. And I say that's just follow-all. Well, they, we met with Zelensky last week. He didn't say anything about winning the war. He thinks $60 billion will give them a stalemate. So now we've gone from to winning a war to a go. stalemate. Here's what concerns me, Larry, that we're going to end up with some kind of false flag, flag because he doesn't have the people to win the war. And who do you think is going to be the next up? Our kids. Our young men and women are going to go over there and have to fight. We've already got people all over the borders. That's what scares me. Uh, you know, we need to make a decision of how much land should be taken by Ukraine and Russia. Somebody do some diplomacy and, and, in this group. Right. A, dip a diplomatic exit strategy has to be part of all exactly. this, right? Then I don't want to leave them high and dry either, okay? I'm not in that school of thought. But there has to be an exit strategy. Yeah. And this idea that this money they can win, I mean, I don't know why... Look, Chuck Schumer is many things, and he's a big liberal, and I'm a conservative, but he knows that that $60 billion is not going to win the war in Ukraine. He knows that. Well, There's he, no point in saying he's it. He's selling American people on this. Larry. It's been a marketing tour from the, no, from the Secretary of State to Secretary of Defense. They've all come to see us in the last month. This is why we need it. Uh, ask your questions. They keep saying, hey, we, we've, got, you know, we've, we've got to do this. They're going to keep going through uh, Europe. I mean, it's all a marketing ploy. What do you think Zelensky came last week for? Uh, and he really doesn't need the money right now. The you know, word was he went to the house and said, listen, I really don't need it now. I need it in March. Mm. Wait a minute. That's not what, what we heard in the Senate. We have to have it now. It's going to be over with. Uh, so there's so many different th things floating around out there. They can't get their story straight. I was going to say, it'd be nice if somebody had the story straight. <laughs> Diplomatic story, money story, any story. Um, are we, are we, I don't want to say are we, is Mr. Biden and Mr. Blinken, whom you mentioned, and Sullivan, the National Security Advisor, it looks to me like these guys uh, are micromanaging and interfering with Israel and the IDF. And I think that's a real bad idea. I don't think there's any doubt. I mean, I, what I saw with my own eyes, with the videos that came, they, they let us see these, it was bad, Larry, really bad. It's, it's worse than what you ever can imagine. Uh, you, you know, you hate to see innocent people killed, but this is war. Mm -hmm. They started a war. They didn't attack military bases. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hamas didn't. They went after civilians. I mean, so I, you don't know where this is going, but you can see that President Biden, by giving money to you, uh, Iran, mm -hmm. basically giving give, them money. Did he give the $10 billion the last... Six I billion. Six billion. Six billion. Yeah. But I thought that that was frozen. Then I thought there's another $10 billion for electricity, not humanitarian. But I thought that was frozen. But, you know, we were looking it up today in the air. I couldn't find anything definitive. That, tell me that money's not really going to Iran. Please, Senator, well, tell me. that We're had, not financing our enemy, are yeah, we? They had $4 billion in, in their coffers when President Trump went out of office with, with everything that he had done to them. Iran was really struggling. Now they have $100 billion. Mm. Where did they get the money from? We allowed them to have it. Whether we gave it to them or we re, uh, relaxed the sanctions, yes. it was because of this administration. Mm. And so it, you know, we caused this. Now you got Yemen... You know, the Houthis are mm -hmm. shooting mm -hmm. rockets at, mm -hmm. at all the ships and the, and the tankers. Well, who's backing the Houthis? Iran. Last and who's one. backing Iran? We are. We're funding the terrorists. Yes, we are. Last one. 
Less than a minute, they're yelling in my ear. They don't love you as much as I do. They just worry about time, producers, God bless them. Um, the fiduciary rule. I remember this was kicking around four or five years ago. The Labor Department now wants to heap all this paperwork and uh, red tape on what, stockbrokers and financial planners? That ain't good. It can't no. be good. It well, can't be good. They're going after everybody where they can get every dime they possibly can, Larry. You know that. I mean, it's regulation after regulation. Make it tough on people to work. Make it tough on people to make money. Uh, that's their game plan. Can you stop it? I think we can, uh, but uh, I don't think we can stop it for another year after this. Uh, we're going to have to have some help from the, the electorate. We have got to get somebody in the presidential office, in the White House, that understands the business, that help. wants to help the people. Help is on the way, Senator. Help is on the way. Thank God. Happy, holy, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Season's, season's greetings. You've been great Thank as you. a senator, and you've been great to this show and me. Thank you. We appreciate it very much.